So now that we've walked through the overall flow of control for the sequential stream, we're going to start zooming in on different pieces of that, seeing how different completion stage and factory methods and so on from completable futures are being applied. So we're going to start by looking at factory methods. And if you recall, factory method is the mechanism in Java completable futures that can be used to start asynchronous processing. And the most common way of doing that, as we've talked about before, is supply async. So that's going to happen here at this point in the overall flow. You can see that we've got our list of URLs. We convert that into a stream. And then we're going to use the map intermediate operation to asynchronously check to see if the URLs are already cached. So the thing we're going to look at here is the check URL cached async behavior, which will asynchronously check to see if a URL is already downloaded. It returns a stream of completable futures to optional URLs, which will have a value present if the URL is not cached, and it will be empty if the URL is already cached. And the reasoning behind that is if we've already gone to the trouble of doing this before, we just want to ignore that URL. But if we haven't downloaded and filtered this URL before, then we want it to be present in the optional. And we'll talk a bit more about optionals. The later behaviors here that come after this are always going to ignore empty optional values, which could be optional URLs or optional images or whatever. So they'll be ignoring the values. That's what we do with empty optionals. We just ignore them. So let's take a look at the check URL cached async behavior, which is just a good old Java method. Nothing too surprising about that. And here's what we do. We call supply async, which is the very common way of getting things going in an asynchronous model with completable futures. And we're going to do some fancy footwork with this optional factory method. So there's several factory methods going on here. There's supply async, which is a factory method for completable future. And there's of nullable, which is a factory method for optional. And what it's going to do, it basically is registering this action, this lambda expression, that will then be run asynchronously. So supply async arranges to run this supplier lambda in the context of whatever the executor is. And in this particular example, the executor that we're going to use for this is just the good old common fork join pool. Now, if I had left off this parameter altogether, it would have just defaulted to the common fork join pool. So I'm just doing this to be a little bit more explicit that we could change the pool that we're running in. In this case, we default to the pool that would have happened if we not provided the parameter here at all. OK, so let's take a closer look at this action that gets registered. What it's doing is it's saying, call the URL cached method. And oh, by the way, URL cache is going to be called asynchronously, right, in a background thread. And it's going to check to see what the return value is. If URL cached gives back a null, that's an indication that we've already seen that URL. If URL gives back, sorry, if, if URL cache gives back, uh, sorry, if it gives back true, that means we've already seen this. It, it is cached. URL cache returns true. It means we've already seen this URL. So in that case, we return null because we want it to be ignored. But if it's not been seen already, it returns false. So we want to give it the URL. And we pass either null or URL to the of nullable factory method. And of nullable creates an optional from a parameter, and that parameter is either non-null, in which case we'll have an optional that's got, an, got a present value, or if the parameter is null, then of nullable creates an empty optional. So what we're doing here is we're either making an empty optional, if we've already seen this URL, it's already been processed, or we're making it have a URL indicating it needs to be downloaded. So that's what's happening here. We're getting an optional. And so what you can see that we return from this thing, oh, well, first let's just talk about what URL cache does. URL cache will take the URL, it'll go through all the filters in the stream, and it'll return true if any of them already exist in the file system. So we'll, we'll see URL cached here. This is another method that's overloaded. This will go check to see if this file already exists in the file system. And if any of the files are in the file system, that's what any match does, then it's going to go ahead and return true. That means it's got a match. And here's what URL cache does. It tries to create a new file. And if it is, if the file already exists, 
then it knows that it's already been downloaded and cached with that name. And that's an atomic operation, so you don't have to worry about race conditions. If it's able to create the file, that means it has not been seen before. So it's fair game to be downloaded again. Now, there are other ways to do caching. This is a very simple-minded way of doing it. The right way to do this would be to use like the max age tag in an HTTP request so you keep an image for a certain amount of time before it ages out. So that makes the cache a little bit more refreshable automatically and so on, but we're just making a simple thing here. Okay, so what we return from this, I should probably have one more little thing here. We return a completable future because that's what supply async always does, right? Supply async returns a completable future. And it returns a completable future to an optional URL. So you can see if you look at the parameter, check URL cached async, asynchronously returns a completable future. Well, it does the processing asynchronously. It returns a completable future to an optional URL such that once the check completes, then that optional URL will either have an element of value present if it was not cached, or it'll be empty if it was already cached. So that's what we're doing here in order to be able to start everything in motion using the supply async factor method. And I think you'll agree with me that this is very subtle code and somewhat complicated code. And so we'll talk a bit about why we need to do this in a second.